On the 26th of June 2021 at 9.13 a.m. IST, me and my wife had our first child, Lucas Hoop Kanding Tungnung, through C-section. Those who have followed me on YouTube and other social media long enough would have probably known by now that I have a biology lab at home and that as part of the variety of activities I do in my lab, I collect and preserve biological specimens for science. It was no different this time as well, and I had planned from the very start to make a wet specimen of our baby's placenta if all went well. In my country, or at least in my state, that is the state of Manipur, where I was born and raised, it's routine protocol for the hospital or clinic to hand over a baby's placenta to the family for a proper burial instead of just letting it end up in a biohazard bin. The clinic where we had Lucas also did just that, and they ceremoniously handed over Lucas's placenta in a traditional earthen pot. Without further delay, I started working on processing his placenta that very same day, in order to make a formally preserved wet specimen out of it. So this is going to be yet another tutorial video on how to process a specimen, in this case a placenta specimen for wet preservation. This video tutorial can also apply to just about any internal organ specimen of any animal that you'd wish to make a wet specimen out of. The techniques and processing steps that I'll be showing in this video are basically the same as those in my first video tutorial on how to wet preserve a large mammal which was a newborn calf specimen. We'll try to make this placenta wet specimen tutorial as short and sweet as possible and so I'll not be explaining in detail the whys and hows of each step in this video. So make sure to go through the calf wet specimen video tutorial again even if you have already watched it. Click on the link given in the top right corner of the screen right now or the links given in the description below to watch that video and also my other videos related to wet specimen processing. So without further ado, let's begin. The entire formalin wet specimen processing of a placenta or any internal organ for that matter can be broken down into the following major steps just as in the wet processing of a large mammalian specimen in my previous video. Certain intuitive modifications may be made in these steps based on the type, size and complexity of the organ specimen being processed. These major steps include washing or rinsing, injection and or slitting, rinsing which is optional, fixation and leaching, a third rinsing which is also optional, a final display and preservation and labeling. Organs such as the placenta can be quite bloody considering the tremendously rich vasculature that they possess. So the first step in the processing of an internal organ specimen would be to thoroughly wash the organ, in this case the placenta, using copious amounts of fresh clean water. 5 to 6 rinsings, even up to 10 rinsings is recommended with a change of water at each rinsing step. Once a majority of the blood has been washed off, which becomes evident from the water getting cleaner and less colored, you may proceed with the next processing step. The placenta is a bilaterally flattened and spongy structure with a thin epithelial lining. So I personally do not find the need to perform slitting of the organ as in the case of whole organisms. Injection at a handful of places using an appropriate fixative solution would largely suffice. Also a lower concentration formalin instead of the usual 10% formalin would be more than enough to thoroughly fix the placenta. I'll be using a 8% formalin concentration as the fixative chemical for injecting the placenta. To begin the injection, spread the placenta or the organ on a shallow tray, using a standard injection syringe with a 24 gauge or so needle size, start injecting 2 to 5 ml each of 8% concentration of preferably buffered formalin at several points throughout the placenta. Make sure to also inject a good amount of the fixative into the larger umbilical arteries and veins, especially in and around the point where the umbilical cord attaches to the placenta.
At the end of the injection step, a good amount of blood and fluids from within the placenta oozes out as they are replaced by the fixative solution. At this point, before proceeding to the next step, the placenta may be briefly rinsed with clean water to get rid of the excess blood. You can also choose to skip this step and proceed to the next. Take a container with a tight-fitting lid which is large enough to loosely accommodate both the placenta and at least twice its volume of the fixative liquid. Now place the already injected specimen into the container and carefully pour in the fixative of the same type and concentration that you used for the injection, in this case 8% formalin. If buffered formalin was used to inject the placenta, make sure to use buffered formalin in this step as well. The amount of fixative used to immerse the placenta must be at least twice the volume of the organ itself. This will ensure that there is a surplus of the fixative solution to thoroughly penetrate the tissues throughout and result in a successful fixation of the specimen. Allow the placenta to soak in the formalin fixative for at least a week to ensure a thorough fixation in and out. Monitor the progress in fixation every day by checking for signs of bloating or patches of unusually darkened spots. If the specimen floats, gently poke or massage the specimen to expel any trapped air. Repeat the injection if you see any of these signs of putrefaction. Add more fixative into the container as well. A properly fixed specimen should not exhibit signs of internal or external decay and rotting whatsoever. Throughout the fixation period, more and more of the blood and fluid from the placenta are replaced by the fixative liquid and oozes or leaches out into the surrounding liquid. As a result of this leaching process, by the end of a week or so, the fixative liquid could become really murky and brown. This is to be expected especially with internal organs and is of least concern as long as a sufficient quantity of fixative of at least twice the volume of the specimen is used to immerse the specimen. Still then, in order to make the final display as clean and crystal clear as possible, it would be a good idea to replace a cloudy formalin with fresh formalin once or twice during the course of the fixation process, as long as you have a good supply of formalin at hand. At the end of the week-long fixation process, remove the placenta from the formalin fixative and give it a brief rinse in clean tap water for a minute or so. This will further get rid of residual blood-tainted fixative from the surface of the placenta. If the placenta is to be preserved in formalin, follow this brief rinsing step and proceed to the next step which is final preservation and display. However, if you are planning on using an alcohol such as ethanol as final preservative fluid, you will have to soak the placenta for about 24 hours and not just a couple of minutes in fresh clean water, preferably slow running tap water, to remove as much of the formalin fixative from the specimen as possible. At the end of this 24 hour washing, soak the placenta for an additional 1 hour or so in fresh water to remove almost all if not all traces of formalin and then proceed to the next step which is final preservation and display. After a week or so of fixation followed by a brief rinsing step, it's time to house the fixed placenta in its final display container and store it in an appropriate preservative fluid, which in the case of a formalin wet specimen, will be the same formalin concentration used to fix the placenta. In case you're planning on using an alcohol as preservative, first transfer the specimen into 50% ethanol or isopropanol, but preferably ethanol after the 24-hour washing period mentioned in the previous step. Leave the specimen in 50% ethanol for a couple of hours and then transfer it into 70% ethanol. Allow the specimen to soak in 70% for a couple of more hours and then finally store the specimen in 75% or 80% ethanol. For the container, I'll be using a custom-made fish tank cut to the size that perfectly accommodates the placenta and sealed with 100% aquarium-grade silicone. This is the same type of container I used in my video on calf specimen preservation. I prefer rectangular museum jars and fish tanks over other types of fancy jars mainly because of the fact that they allow a clear visualization and display of every nook and corner of the specimen if the specimen is properly mounted in the jar. To hold the placenta within the jar for best display, I'll be using a sheet of glass that's been pre-cut to perfectly fit in the display tank. Spread out the placenta on the surface of this glass plate. 
using a sturdy cotton thread or better still, a nylon fishing thread or a nylon surgical suturing thread, tie the placenta flat on the glass surface at a couple of places like so. Now carefully lower the glass plate containing the placenta into the tank which was already filled to about half with fresh 8% formalin. Make final adjustments to the specimen if needed and then top up the jar with the preservative until the placenta is fully submerged. If buffered formalin was used for the injection and fixation steps, make sure to use buffered formalin in the final preservation step as well. Remove any air bubbles which may form on the surface of the specimen or in between the specimen and the display glass plate by gently rubbing and poking the surface of the placenta with a glass, plastic or metal rod. Now seal the lid of the container temporarily using a cellophane tape. This has been covered in detail in my calf specimen preservation tutorial video. You might have to change the preservative once or twice in the course of a few weeks to a few months to achieve a clear display. Once any further discoloration ceases to occur and the preservative liquid remains more or less clear, you can seal the lid permanently using silicone sealant as can be seen in this photo. Or you can simply stick with the temporary cellophane tape seal because that will anyways last for a few to several years. It's always a good idea to attach an appropriate label to a wet specimen regardless of whether or not it's intended for science and research. A decent label need not be fancy. Minimal info on the name of the specimen, date of collection and preparation, location where collected, type and concentration of the fixative and preservative used, including the specimen collector's name, would suffice, although the more the merrier. Using archival quality paper with archival pigment-based ink to make the label is an added bonus, although not compulsory. The fixed placenta or internal organ specimen stored in an appropriate preservative in an appropriate sealed container with a label on it is now finished and ready for display. Waste formalin generated throughout the specimen processing can be properly stored, recycled and reused for processing subsequent wet specimens a couple more times. Beyond that, it needs to be properly disposed of at a hazardous waste disposal center if such a facility exists in the region or country where you live. So this is all about the formalin wet preservation tutorial of my baby boy Lucas's precious placenta. Do subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for more such biology related content. Thanks for watching.